Hi folks, my name is Ben and welcome to another Shots Fired Airsoft video. And in this video, we're looking at a review of the Sima CM513 M4 Suppressed. So this is going to feature shooting footage, chrono data, and my overall thoughts about the weapon. Uh, if you want to see more about the general overview and features of the gun, uh, please view the unboxing that's on the channel. Uh, this is going to focus more on actually using the gun and uh, what it's like when you're, when you're sort of firing it. If there's anything that I need to relate to on the gun, I will you know, show you up close. Uh, the other thing is, is I will split this uh, in two just to show you how easy it is to get to the gearbox. Um, it was not going to be a full disassembly at all. Uh, a lot of people who buy this aren't going to be doing that. And there are videos already out there on the internet for it. Okay, so just for people that haven't might not have seen this weapon before, uh, this is a very lightweight, uh, sort of beginner AEG from the Sima range. Uh, you can actually pick these up for around £50 off, say, Tyrone gun. Um, I paid 80 for this one in the UK. It isn't bad at all, uh, especially for, you know, it, it has everything. It's got the adjustable stock. You've got uh, flip-up sights, uh, fully railed handguard. Uh, it comes with everything you need in the box, uh, battery, charger, and really it's a, uh, a fully featured and complete weapon. Uh, removable suppressor, although the barrel does stick out all the way to the end, so if you wanted to um, put a another extension on it or use a tracer, you would have to have a barrel extension with the tracer on the end, or have a very long tracer, etc. Apart from that, there isn't really any drawbacks to the design, it is a basic M4. So if we go over to the uh, chronograph data, uh, one thing to mention about these is that when these come into the country, they fire at 420 FPS, which also results in a lower uh, rounds per minute. So this one has been downgraded by patrol base in the UK. And uh, when I initially fired it, I fired all of my guns when I originally get them out of the package to um, uh, see, you know, check they're working correctly before I take them all to a field and take the camera gear over. Uh, this will have about 347 out of the box, which was a bit hotter than patrol base said. However, as you'll see in the actual firing data, I, which I did after the shooting test, you'll see that the FPS has come down to a much more sort of uh, less on the edge of being too hot for like say Suki B, uh, 330 FPS, which is great. And exactly what patrol base say it should be. So just to reiterate, this chronograph test was done after the firing test, so the springs had time to bed in. Um, it shouldn't really go any lower than this. Uh, so re in reality, it's kind of in the sweet spot for an AEG in the UK, which is fantastic. And the fully auto rate is kind of spot on for a low end SEMA, uh, around sort of 12-ish rounds a second. Um, that's pretty much what we expect out of these weapons. You can use uh, high voltage, maybe to store yourself a little MOSFET at the back for you know, sort of 15 quid, um, run 11.1 .1 and it will keep up with most things. Uh, high speed motors if you want to run 7.4 it's it's all proper with this weapon like I say they, they just have a lower starting price and for that uh, it's difficult kind of not to recommend them really but anyway we'll get into the shooting test in a sec okay so let's move on to the firing test um, the first thing I'd like to say is that these sights work perfectly fine but I do not get on with this style of sight never have um, I very much prefer to see where my BBs are going, so I prefer sort of like an open iron sight or a, a larger field of view through a sight reticle. So these sort of pinpoint sights that this has are not ideal for me. Um, I also haven't really messed with the setup of the gun, so this is firing pretty much out of the box. Uh, we're at 50 meters like usual for this, uh, didn't really see much point in going further. Uh, the hop up works perfectly fine. Um, I did not adjust this, this is pretty much out of the box. Uh, we're on 0.2 gram BBs, which is too light for this really, it's supposed to be on 0.25s. But I wanted to keep it as sort of, uh, industry standard as possible. Uh, and as you can see, when we're firing, uh, we've got a nice little grouping sort of in the bottom left of the um, target. I was shooting at, I had sort of like sighted the bullseye. Um, but without adjusting the sights, that's kind of where it wanted to land, so I just let it do it. Um, we don't really get many flies or anything, we've got a nice little grouping in the bottom left, which would suggest that if I sort the sights out or use sights that were um, better for me, we could get on that bullseye and stay within those inner sort of two rings if we wanted to. And then just at the end here, uh, we give it a nice little flip over to full auto and get a few rounds off as you can see 
but also always the funnest thing about an AEG, and we just hammer that target. It's nice, doesn't deviate, stays on. If anything, because um, I'm not that fussed about accuracy, and just sort of let the gun go. It's almost better because I just hold it in place and fire. Um, nothing to complain about here. It is uh, a very good, very effective AEG, especially considering the price. Now, one of the things I did want to show was how you get into the uh, gearbox on this. Well, not really on the gearbox, just kind of split the gun in two. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do it on the rebuild, but here we have the sort of receiver and stock. If you wanted to get the gearbox out from here, it's a matter of removing the two motor plate screws, motor out, uh, pull the uh, back of the stock off, obviously make sure everything's unplugged. There will be a screw in the back, that allows you to remove the buffer tube, and then you pull the wiring through, and then this uh, captive pin here, which is actually held in place by a uh, Allen bolt, take that out, push it through, and the whole gearbox will slot out the top like that for maintenance or whatever, or so upgrades or whatever you want to do to it. Again, not much else to see there. Uh, the barrel assembly and hop is just in there. It's only restrained by the gun. It's a fairly typical sort of uh, one piece um, assembly and it is sealed on the barrel, so sort of pre PTFE'd, if you will. And when you're putting it back together, you literally just pop it in there and it just sits. Um, it's held in place by the receiver of the weapon. Okay, so when you slide this back on, those things are going to get caught and it's a bit janky, but on there, make sure it sits under your bolt. There are various little notches that your charge handle will get caught on, so just pop them over like that, and then back into position, a little pull on the back, and it slides in. So there we are, and um, it's just a matter of popping your pin in from the other side, which is the front pin which obviously you start by removing to make sure the flat of the captive pin is in line with this modding on the uh, body here and then it will push all the way in and you just pop your retainer allen bolt back in and there we are it's back together okay then with all that said and done what do we think of the uh, sign cm513 uh, I think it's a great starter base for anyone trying to get into Airsoft uh, who doesn't have you know, 300 quid to spend on all the kit. Uh, it is a complete package and really doesn't need anything out to go to your first game. Um, the, the actual uh, base of the gun is very good gearbox, strong, shouldn't let you down. It's what we've come to expect from Cyma. Uh, you, you may wish to get another battery or some better batteries. Um, uh, you've got to be careful using the LiPo in this because it doesn't have a MOSFET. So there's no automatic cutoff. It is, you know, it is possible to run the gun too far down and damage the battery. However, um, getting into that sort of side of things, an aftermarket hop-up unit, um, a MOSFET, a LiPo, and really, uh, maybe, a, maybe a better quality in the barrel you have something which really is going to perform excellently or even better than it already does there's nothing wrong with the way it performs now but it will keep up with most of your high-end expensive AEGs it just feels plastic uh, so it depends what you're down for if you're a performance or is everything um, kind of person then you'll get along with this perfectly fine if you're one of those people who needs all the trades and the uh, I mean, we do have a unique serial number but all the Simon stuff does. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you need the trades, if it's for a collection, then well, no, you wouldn't bother you would go and buy a you know a branded traded M4. However, this for actual gameplay, fantastic. Nothing wrong with it whatsoever. And for the money, it represents a really good way for people to get into the hobby. Just to wrap up, I've been Ben. This has been a Shots by Airsoft video on the Sana CM513. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again next time.